Hello guys this is 12th Harbinger and welcome to my complete Charlotte guide. In this video, I am going to cover everything you need to know about her. Talents, Constellation, Best Builds and Team Cops. Without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting with her talents. Her elemental skill, Framing, Freezing Point Composition has a tap and hold version. On tapping her elemental skill, it will deal AoE cryo damage and apply snappy silhouette marks to a maximum of 5 enemies in front of her. The snappy silhouette mark lasts for 6 seconds and deal cryo damage at an interval of 1.5 seconds. On holding her elemental skill, Charlotte enters composition mode. During this time, you need to hold the skill until the viewfinder of her camera expands and reaches the finisher frame state. In this mode, you can move and change your camera direction freely to mark the enemies just like the hold version of Nahida's elemental skill. The hold version will deal more damage than the tap version and lasts for 12 seconds. The tap version of her skill has a cooldown of 12 seconds, and the hold version has 18 seconds. You might be wondering whether to use her tap version or hold version. Unlike Nahida, the hold version needs you to hold her elemental skill for few seconds to mark the enemy. Due to this, she will take up more field time and she may get interrupted during this time period, so I would recommend you to use the tap version. However, in long runs, like with Risley, you might want to use her hold skill if you use Tenacity of Millilith on her as the tap version only lasts for 6 seconds. You can switch Tenacity with Noblis Oblige if you don't want to use the hold version of her skill. The hold version can be used when the enemies are spread out and you need to apply cryo on all of them. Her elemental burst, comprehensive confirmation, creates a newsflash field that will deal AoE cryo damage and restores HP for all party members based on Charlotte's attack. The field will deal cryo damage at intervals to opponents inside it, and will continuously restore HP of active character within its AoE based on Charlotte's attack. Her burst only lasts for 4 seconds and has a very small AoE. It works just like Jean's burst. It will initially heal a huge chunk of HP to all party members then provide small heals for the active character. Though her healing is not as good as Jean, she is still a decent healer option. She has a good synergy with Farina as Charlotte will heal all the party members and get their HP ready for the second rotation to gain fanfare points. Even if you can't get the maximum number of points, she can be used to achieve a decent amount of fanfare points which will usually be enough to clear the hardest content. Her first ascension passive, moment of impact, when opponents marked by the hold version of her elemental skill are defeated, her elemental skill cooldown will be decreased by 2 seconds. This cooldown decrease can be triggered 4 times every 12 seconds which means you can decrease the CD by 8 seconds every 12 seconds. Her second ascension passive, Diversity Survey, gives healing bonus to Charlotte depending on the number of Fontaine characters in the team excluding herself, and it also gives cryo damage bonus to her depending on the number of non-Fontanian characters in the team. For her talent priority, just level her burst. You don't need to level her skill or normal attacks, but if you wish to use her as a sub-DPS you can consider leveling her elemental skill. Moving on to her constellations. Her first constellation will mark the character she heals after using her burst with verification. This will heal them once every 2 seconds for 80% of Charlotte's attack. This effect will last for 6 seconds, since there's nothing specified about it being only on the active character. I believe it will be applicable for all the characters as the initial heal of her burst is team-wide. And if that's the case this will be an extremely strong upgrade to her kit. Her second constellation will increase the attack of Charlotte based on the number of enemies she hit with her elemental skill. This will increase her healing as her healing is based on her attack. Third and fifth constellation increase her burst and skill level respectively. In her fourth constellation, when her burst hits an opponent marked by her elemental skill, it will deal 10% more damage and restore 2 energy to Charlotte. This restoration can be triggered 5 times every 20 seconds. That means you can get 10 energy back every 20 seconds. Her sixth constellation lets her heal with her elemental skill. When the active character's normal and charged attacks hit an opponent marked by Charlotte's elemental skill, she will initiate a follow-up attack that deals 180% of her attack as AoE cryo damage and heals active character within this AoE for 42% of her attack. This effect can be triggered once every 6 seconds, and both damage and healing done this way will be considered as having been done by Charlotte's elemental burst. Her constellations C1, C2 and C6 work towards increasing her healing and the C4 reduces her burst energy cost by 10. If possible try to get her to C1 as it is an amazing constellation. But don't be forced to pull for it. It'll be fine even if you don't have her constellations as pulling for constellations may result in getting any unwanted 5 stars. Moving on to her builds. You will mostly want to use Charlotte as a healer especially with Farina to get the maximum amount of healing from her and build fanfare points. This build is usually the best approach for Charlotte. You can also use her as a sub-DPS to deal some off-field damage with her elemental skill. This build can be used in teams where you don't need high healing. 
The scaling of her elemental skill is quite low but it is still viable. And if you really like her, you can also go with a DPS-focused build with weapons and artifacts that have offensive stats but it is usually not recommended. Then again we also have the DPS Barbara. <laughs> Starting with the support build. For her weapons, Favonius Codex is the best weapon to use as it elevates the team's energy issues. Charlotte has a high energy cost of 80 so this also helps to solve her energy issues. Our 5 Oath Sworn Eye is also an amazing option as it provides 48% energy recharge along with attack percent. Prototype Amber with refinements is also a solid option as it provides team-wide healing and gives energy regeneration to Charlotte. Even though the HP percent is wasted on her, the passive healing makes up for it. Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust are great for more healing as they provide a ton of attack. You can use any other attack percent or energy recharge weapon if you don't have these, or just use Thrilling Tails to buff your main DPS. Regarding how much energy recharge you need on Charlotte, it highly depends on your team and your build, but just to give you a generic number, try to aim for 200% energy recharge with a Favonius user in the team. If you don't have anyone to use the Favonius weapon, you can give it to Charlotte. It will decrease further with more Favonius users or Cryo members in your team. C4 will further reduce the energy requirements as it basically turns her energy cost from 80 to 70. For her artifact sets, you can use 4-piece Tenacity of Millilith to boost the attack of your whole team. Noblesse Oblige is another option to give team-wide attack buff but it comes only from her burst. Check out my tap skill versus hold skill part of this video for more information on these two sets. If your team doesn't need the attack buff or if you want to maximize on her healing, you can use 4-piece Maidens Beloved, or mix and use 2-piece artifacts of sets that give healing bonus, attack percent or energy recharge. You can also use 4-piece Ocean Clam set for some extra off-field damage but it is not a recommended set. Moving on to her artifact stats, energy recharge or attack percent on Sands depending on her stats, attack percent on Goblet and healing bonus on Circlet. If you don't have a healing bonus circlet, you can use an attack percent as well. For her artifact substats, prioritize energy recharge and attack percent. If you use Favonius Codex, try to build around 40-50% to 50 crit rate on her to proc its passive consistently. If you can't get enough crit from substats, you can use a crit rate circlet. If your team has cryo resonance, it becomes easier to build crit rate on her and proc Favonius passive easily. Moving on to her sub DPS build. Weapons with attack percent stats are best here as they also provide decent healing along with damage. Kagura's Verity is a great option as it provides high elemental skill damage along with a lot of crit damage, but your healing will suffer. Favonius is also a decent option for elevating your team energy issues. And Oath Sworn Eye provides attack along with energy recharge. You can use other weapons with stats like attack percent. Crit stats or energy recharge weapons. You will need to stack on energy recharge for this build as well to consistently use her burst. For her artifacts, I would still recommend using Tenacity or Noblesse as it buffs the whole team. Golden Troop is the best set to maximize her skill as it buffs the elemental skill by tons. Blizzard Strayer is also great but is only limited to freeze teams. You can mix and use two-piece set effects of Golden Troop, Blizzard Strayer, attack percent sets or healing bonus set. For the artifact stats, energy recharge or attack percent on sands, cryo damage bonus or attack percent on goblet. I would recommend using attack percent as it will benefit her healing as well. Crit or attack percent on circlet. If you can maintain a good ratio with attack percent circlet, it is recommended to use it. And look for energy recharge, crit stats and attack percent from substats. Moving on to her team cops. Charlotte is a great healer option in many teams. Any DPS character works well with Charlotte especially if they react well with cryo such as in freeze team. Just make sure that her cryo application doesn't mess with the reactions. She shines in teams with Farina as Farina has given a huge value to healers. Charlotte can provide buffs with tenacity of Millilith in teams where attack percent is beneficial. This makes her an amazing healer option. She also makes Kazuya usable in some Farina teams like with Nuvolet, Risley or Ayaka. In Nebulet team you might not need a healer as Nuvolet can generate good amount of fanfare points by himself and his healing combined with Farina's passive will provide some team-wide healing. Not to mention using Amber on him reduces the demand for healers even further. Okay now let's go back to Charlotte. She is especially good in freeze teams as she can provide cryo resonance along with the attack buffs from Tenacity. Let me know in the comments which build you are going to use on Charlotte and if I have missed anything. Don't forget to check out my in-depth Farina build guide if you are planning to pull for her. And that's all for this video. Don't forget to support my channel by liking and sharing the video. Subscribe for more Genshin Impact videos. Thanks for watching.